So the first case study we're going to be covering will be barn removal. It's going to be a plant in the Canary Islands with beach wells, SDI less than three, conventional pretreatment, feed salinity of approximately 38,000 milligrams per liter, 5.5 milligrams per liter of feed boron, 7.8 feed pH. Operating temperature will be between 18 to 24 degrees Celsius, so not too high. Production is 5,000 meters cubed per day. Recovery can be anywhere from 43 to 45% based on our requirements. Maximum membrane age that we'll be using today will be three years. And then the permeate quality requirements will be TES less than 350 ppm, chloride less than 200 ppm, and boron less than 1 ppm. And one of the critical uh, issues with this plant is that we're not allowed to use any pH adjustment in order to meet uh, the permeate quality requirements. Uh, namely, in this case, that will affect boron. Um, as I mentioned in last week's presentation, for those of you that attended, um, boron rejection is heavily affected by your feed pH. Um, so typically, a way to boost boron rejection is to uh, dose with NaOH to increase the pH. Um, however, in this case, that's not allowed. Um, usually, the reason it's not allowed can be things such as uh, to prevent any operation issues uh, involved when you're dosing pH. Um, another thing could also be um, to avoid, of course, just the cost of chemical dosing and installing a chemical dosing system. Some additional uh, design information. So when you take a look at your uh, design requirements, um, keep in mind that the information that they provided may not always be the complete picture. So for example, um, some things that you may need to ask for clarification or get uh, or make assumptions, for example, can happen. Um, one of the things, for example, is should I consider a safety margin? So when you're designing a system, um, most of the time, if you exceed the permeate quality requirements, there's going to be a fine involved. Um, and obviously, that's not going to look good for your system. Um, so usually, when we're designing, we'll consider a safety margin. Uh, how much safety margin you use depends, of course, on the permeate quality requirements um, and the operating conditions. So another issue that you may run into is, should I consider energy recovery device? And if so, if it's a pressure exchanger, do I need to consider a salinity increase? Um, another thing to consider is if there's any permeate back pressure, for example. Um, permeate back pressure can be important, especially when you're trying to size your maximum feed pressure for your uh, pump. Um, if you neglect to uh, account for any permeate back pressure when the system has some, for example, then maybe the pump sizing will be um, insufficient. Another thing that you may want to look into is the plant or the region operating history. For example, has the plant ever operated with any fouling concerns? If they have a, if the plant has a history of um, fouling concerns, then maybe you want to try to um, make the redesign a little bit more conservative, for example, with a lower system flux, for example, or maybe with 400 square feet membrane um, in order to reduce that fouling concern. So let's switch right now into QCOS so we can design the system. So now we have our QPlus projection software open. Um, so and then I'll show you step by step typically how we uh, begin approaching this seawater RO system design. So the first thing um, is to input the feed analysis. In this case, I've already done it beforehand, um, just to save us a little bit of time. So that can be done in the water profile option and then you can just click add new and then enter your feed analysis. This is a typical feed analysis with majority sodium and chloride with a significant contribution from potassium, magnesium, calcium, as well as sulfate. And in this case, because um, we're very concerned with the permeate uh, boron, um, make sure to enter your boron correctly, which is 5.5 ppm. 
And once we're done, we can balance and save and close this window. Next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at the water source. So we know for this system that we're going to be operating with beach wells with SDI less than three. So we can open up the water source and we can change our water source from seawater open intake to seawater well. And you can see here what changes is your flow loss and your self-passage increase. It went from 7% for open intake to 5% for the well. Another thing that this does is when you switch your water source, it changes the uh, design guidelines within Q plus as well. Um, so for example, our recommended average flux, the maximum membrane flux, um, all of those will be changed depending on what water source that you select. So we can save that. Now, if you're curious about our design guidelines, you can just go into properties um, where you can click guideline and then it will open up a window um, for you that shows our uh, system for, uh, design guidelines in both metric units and also American units. And another thing you can find here is our product specifications. Um, so if you're unsure of which product to use, uh, maybe you know um, a similar product of a competitor, um, you can open up our product specs and then you can take a look at what uh, operating specifications that you'll need for the system. So let's go back to our design. We'll go to temperature now. We'll change our maximum temperature to the maximum temperature specified in this project, which is 24. Um, the reason we always, I typically start with the maximum temperature is because we're interested in, um, obviously we want to check the that the design meets the worst case permeate quality, uh, the quality at the worst case uh, quality conditions. So that's the maximum temperature. And then we want to change our feed pH as well from 8 to 7.8. Maximum membrane age, we can change that from 0 to 3 as per our requirements. And then here we want to change, uh, we want to enter our production, which is 5,000 cubic meters per day, and also our recovery, which was variable from 43 to 45%. And we can select uh, which one we want to start with. Um, so for Q plus, you only need to enter two of these parameters. Um, so let's first change the units. I'm going to change the units uh, from meters cubed per hour to meters cubed per day. Enter 5,000. Um, so right now, we have the option for going anywhere from 43 to 45% recovery. What I want to start with is 43%. And the reason I start with 43% is because typically when you're operating at similar conditions, if you increase the recovery, the permeate quality is going to get worse. So first, I want to test if we can meet the permeate quality with 43%. And then if we can meet it with 43%, no trouble, then later on, maybe we can increase the recovery to 45%. So right now I've entered the recovery, and then now I want to enter our um, energy recovery device. So if we go to design tools, you click energy recovery. You can add in um, isobaric exchanger, or you can use a turbocharger. In this case, let's use isobaric. And for your volumetric mixing, the default is 6%. Um, for this case, let's assume that we have already accounted for any uh, salinity increase in the feed salinity. So in this case, the uh, 38,000 milligrams per liter, let's just say um, that also already includes the volumetric mixing. So let's put this at zero for now. Okay, so now to select the number of uh, pressure vessels and also the number of elements per pressure vessel. So typically we'll use seven elements per pressure vessel. That's a good starting point. Um, and then in terms of membrane selection, because of the uh, permeate boron requirement of one PPM, um, we know that we're gonna need quite good boron rejection. Um, so typically here you would select a high rejection membrane that could be the R, the GR, or the SR. S, uh, the R has the highest flow, the GR has the intermediate flow, and the SR has the lowest flow. So SR would give you the best permeate quality in this case, and R would give you uh, the worst, but with uh, lower feed pressure for R. 
So first let's choose, let's pick the intermediate first and then let's just see how we're going. If we're able to meet the feed per, uh, the permeate quality quite easily with this, then maybe we can switch to a looser membrane. However, if the permeate quality that we're getting is not sufficient, then we may want to switch to a tighter membrane. So for a number of pressure vessels, let's just change this. You can see here that when you were designing, you see the average flux is calculated right now at 728 LMH. Um, so when you change the number of pressure vessels, the average flux will automatically recalculate. So we change this to 10. And you'll notice now our average flux changed from 728 to 72.8 when we changed from 1 to 10, right? So this is useful because it helps us um, change the number of pressure vessels in order to get the targeted average flux. In this case, for a beach water well system, um, average flux you can uh, typically operate anywhere from around 13 to 15 LMH uh, quite uh, quite easily. Um, in this case, let's target somewhere around 14.5 LMH. So let me increase this first. Let me go to 30. And if we go to 30, we can see the average flux is still quite high at 24. So let me increase this a little bit more to 45. And now you'll see the flux is at 16.2 LMH, right? So that's still a little bit too high. So let me add a few more pressure vessels. Let me go to 50. So we go to 50. This is right around the region that we're targeting, around 14.5 LMH. It's at 14.56. So that's acceptable for this project. Um, so that will be a good uh, starting point for this design. So we take a look at our uh, design. So we have all of the basic parameters filled in. And so we're gonna hit calculate. So the system's done calculating, and then now you can take a look at the permeate quality. So you'll notice that um, the permeate TDS requirement is 350 ppm, and we're at 152, so that's uh, quite easy for us to meet. Permeate chloride was 200 ppm, and we're at under 90 ppm, so that's also uh, readily met. And then the last thing was permeate boron less than 1 ppm. And right now we're at 0.95 ppm. So in this case, maybe this is a little bit too close for comfort, even though we are meeting the permeate quality. Um, maybe maybe the um, end user wants a little bit more safety margin in terms of your um, projected feed pressure, right? Because projections are an estimation of the um, performance of the membranes. So in this case, maybe you want a little bit more of a safety margin. Let's say in this case, the end user is targeting about 0.15 ppm uh, margin on the permeate boron. So 0.15 ppm margin on a 1 ppm on target would give you 0.85. So let's just say the client wants 0.85 ppm in your projected boron at worst case in order to have enough safety margin uh, to be confident in the system going forward. So from here we can see if we want to reduce 0.95 to 0.85 we're going to have to use maybe a tight membrane. Right so we're going to go from GR we're going to select the tighter membrane, which is SR, and we're going to calculate. So once we hit calculate, we see, okay, now the permeate boron is 0.79 ppm. So 0.85 ppm was the maximum boron target, and we're at 0.79 ppm, so we do have a little bit of room. Um, one thing I mentioned before, that we were operating with 43% recovery, um, even though the uh, design requirement was 43 to 45%. So because we do have that room in permeate quality, we can now change the recovery from 43 to 45%. Calculate, and you'll notice that the permeate boron has increased from 0.79 to 0.81. However, it's still below the 0.85 ppm target that we set. So the design would still be able to meet the permeate quality requirements for this project. The permeate TDS and the permeate chloride are also no trouble, 350 ppm and 200 ppm. Those are quite uh, easily met in this case, so we don't need to worry about those. And then another thing that we may want to check is at 18 degrees, we want to check our maximum feed pressure. So at 18 degrees, we hit calculate, and we get 66.8 bar operating feed pressure. So in this case, if the maximum feed pressure is 66.8 bar, you add some safety margin on top of that, and also to account for any flow losses, 
in order to size your um, high pressure pump. So let me switch back to our PowerPoint. So this is approximately the design that we came up with in order to satisfy the uh, one PPM boron requirement and also the other permeable quality requirements for our system. So the design that we came up with, it satisfies TDS less than 350 PPM, chloride less than 200 PPM, and also boron, which was the limiting factor of one PPM. Um, we also had sufficient safety margin. Um, we had at least 0.15 PPM safety margin, so our worst case projected boron was less than 0.85 ppm. So going forward, uh, what changes could we potentially make? Um, some things that we can change, for example, if, if we wanted to change the uh, length of the pressure vessels, if we wanted to change it to eight elements per pressure vessel, um, that could potentially be a choice in order to reduce the number of pressure vessels that we have overall. Another thing is maybe we want to reduce the flux and reduce the pressure vessels uh, again and operate at a higher system flux to have less pressure vessels. Or a different option could be to lower recovery in order to reduce the operating feed pressure. If the feed pressure for the system um, is too high, for example, for the end user, maybe there's some workaround where we can find um, where we can lower the recovery in order to reduce the feed pressure of the system to operate something more um, acceptable. And something else to consider, um, does a client want a, for example, cleaning flexibility in the future? Um, and then in that case, maybe we need to account for N minus one operation when you're sizing the pumps. Um, N minus one operation uh, will increase the fee, uh, maximum feed pressure. However, um, in terms of worst case quality, that will be an N trains operation. So this is just a preliminary design just to show you um, how we start our design process. So typically when we start this process, we do expect revisions. Um, of course, there's going to be um, discussion with the end user, um, see what the requirements are, um, see where their priorities lie, for example. Um, as we mentioned, you know, we do have room to uh, increase the flux, for example, to reduce the number of pressure vessels if the uh, uh, initial cost is a concern. If their concern is the operating feed pressure, then of course we can lower the recovery as well. Um, so there will be some discussion in order to do, uh, in order to come to the optimal design for the system. 